So the uh, seed track has finished warming up, it took about 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, now we just need to associate the seed track with these targets and then we can start scanning it. So to do that we have the software, we can actually see in the software, this is that volume, there's the seed track out here and this is what it's looking at, that, the whole volume it has. And those are the targets it's seeing currently. Uh, if you look at these ones up here, if I actually cover those with my hand on the actual uh, motor, it, the seed track can't see it so it goes away. So now what we have to do is tell the C-Track that yes, use these targets to track it. So if there's extra targets in the scene, we can say don't track those. So now it, so all we have to do is lock it in like that. Um, now if you watch these targets, I can actually move the engine around and the targets move with it. All right, so that means as I'm scanning the part, if uh, oh I get to an angle I can't see or something, I can just move the uh, part around and keep scanning and everything's tracked relative to this whole fixture. So that way we don't have to worry about, oh, I accidentally bumped it and we ruined our scan. So we'll go ahead and just grab our scanner now. Now you see, there's my metric scan in the uh, scene. So if I get too out close, I can't see it. Let me see how it moves in 3D space there. So that's our scanner. So now as I start scanning it, we'll just start picking up the data live on the screen really quickly. Um, Another thing you notice is that this is actually, so because this is an optical scanner, uh, we have a specific shutter speed over here. Now, it's putting out laser lines, it's bouncing back to the camera, and it has to try and read that. So depending on how shiny the surface is, we need to choose a specific shutter mode. Um, I can actually have, there's a configuration for that too. So we can actually uh, turn on our scanner. So we actually see, these are the scan lines that's kicking out. Uh, you can kind of see them on my keyboard as I up the shutter speed, the potency of these lines appear stronger. So if I point that at the object I'm going to scan, yellow is uh, good saturation, gray is unsaturated, and then red is oversaturated. So I can actually point it at a specific part, so I'm going to point it up in here, and then I'm going to click auto adjust. And so it automatically sets my shutter speed to the perfect resolution to be able to scan that data well. So again, makes life a lot easier. So we can go ahead and hit apply on that. Might actually up that a little bit just for fun. Uh, let's put some optimized mesh options on. Now I can just click scan. Now as I start scanning this engine, it'll just appear live on the screen there. And as I walk around, do the front side, and I try not to stand in front of the C-Track, we can pick up that data really easily. I can even go down and get the bottom of this uh, scanner so I don't get out of C-Track division range. I'm going to get the bottom. And we can go through and just start, and this is where we go and start scanning our whole engine up. Get my cable, and there we go. And we'll just go through and scan it up and get all that data. So this is recording you know, hundreds of thousands of points as it's going along. So you see that bar on the left side of the screen that's green? That's good, so that's kind of our depth of field for you know, what's good for the scanner to see the standoff distance. So when it goes yellow and red, it's too close. When it goes to blue, it's too far away. Just kind of want to try and keep it in the green range. Uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt usually depending if you're trying to get down the holes or something, but that's about it. And then we're just gonna scan the engine up. And then from there, we'll uh, go reverse engineer it in the software and we'll get our actual parametric solid model.